Hey guys, welcome to Simple Seeds. This week we're going to be focusing on how to survive momentary and light affliction when it doesn't feel momentary and it doesn't feel light at all. So the verse that I'm going to focus on today is coming from 2 Corinthians 4.17. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. And I'm really ministering from a place that I'm in currently or I have been in recently and I want to share with you the way that I'm overcoming this. Because a lot of times when we get into a place where there is affliction, it doesn't feel momentary and it does not feel light. It feels like this is going to be your life now and this is what you're going to go through forever. And it hurts really bad to the point where you just don't even know if you want to do ministry anymore. You don't know if you want to do this life, this job, this person, whatever your thing is. And it can make it almost impossible. And one thing I want to point out is that in 2 Corinthians, this is Paul talking to us here. And he's saying momentary and light affliction. And when we flip over in the same letter, actually, the very same letter, even though it's a different chapter, what we see is we see a list of some of his momentary and light afflictions. Which may sound familiar in the fact that they're not momentary and they're not light. So when you flip over to chapter 11 in 2 Corinthians, starting at verse 23, it says, And far more imprisonments, beaten, times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in dangers of rivers and dangers of robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers from the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers and false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights and hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. And this is just a couple of things that Paul went through. Yet it, for some reason in the same letter, he's able to say, this is a momentary and light affliction. And what I want to share with you today is the victory that I've received in this area that I'd like to share with you and give to you. And if you actually flip back a little bit in chapter 4, we can get an answer for this. Uh, in chapter 4, verse 7 through 10, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. This is saying, you are afflicted. In every way, we are afflicted. But what I want you to see is that in your affliction, you weren't crushed. You're perplexed. You're, you're confused about what is happening. Why? Why, God, did this happen to me? You're perplexed. But with the hope that you have in Christ, you're not despairing. You're persecuted, but you are not forsaken. God never forsook you. You are struck down, but not destroyed. You're always caring about the dying of Christ in your body. So that through your body dying, your spirit can live. And so what I want to point to you is the verses that surround the scripture that we started with. How are we supposed to look at these 
momentary and light afflictions the way Paul did. He obviously looked at them in such a way that what happened to him, all those terrible things, looked small. And so in verses 16 through 18 it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And what this is saying is, don't lose heart because this body and this time here on earth is being difficult, because it's being persecuted, because it's hard. But as this body dies, our spirit comes alive. And the way that your afflictions got so big in the first place is because you focused in on them. But what Paul is saying is, don't focus on what you see, Focus on what's not seen. For what's not seen is spiritual, and what is not seen is eternal. And if you could possibly grasp the greatness of God, and the God that you serve, and the life He has planned for you in eternity, this affliction would be nothing. What you're going through that seems like it's going to end you now won't mean a thing in the light of eternity. If you can see eternity looks like this, and this little affliction wouldn't even be a dot on the map. So what you have to do when you come up against these afflictions, when you come up against the thing that makes you want to quit, you persevere. You run the race that has been set before you like you're trying to win. Winners in races never give up. They may stop at a checkpoint, they may grab some water and refuel, but they never stop running the race. If you're going to win this race, you can't stop. And what that runner, the whole race is thinking about, is the finish line. They're not thinking about how hard it is where they're at. They're thinking about the finish line. So you've got to stop thinking about this affliction. You're giving it so much power by thinking about it. And it, it's not light. And it's, it's not short. It's not momentary. But in the light of eternity, if you can focus your sights on God and eternal life with Him so much, then what will happen is that affliction will become momentary and it will become light. So I want to just pray with you guys before we finish out. Um, so if you'll just close your eyes. God, I thank you that these afflictions on this earth are not going to last forever. That one day we're going to live an eternity with you. We're not going to cry anymore. We're not going to hurt anymore. We're not going to despair anymore. And God, we just receive your hope in our heart right now. We receive eternity into our hearts. I ask that you give all of these viewers eyes to see eternity and ears to hear your voice. God, I speak blessings over them and that whatever they are walking through, that it would be momentary and light in the view of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this week that as you begin to look at things in the light of eternity and in the hope of Christ, that you will have renewed strength to run the race that has been set before you. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. And if there's any topics that you want me to cover, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Bye.